Hello and welcome back to GT Retro World. But today we're going to take a look at a radio that was sent over from the guys at Banggood and it's a deep SDR version 6. Well, SDR radio to be honest. Anyway guys, let's have a little look what we've got here. Eh? First of all we have the antenna which is basically a telescopic source and it's about, let's have a little look. It's about two and a half foot long. There you go guys and it's SMA male, so we've obviously got female on the radio, so that's a little antenna. So it comes with a little stylus for its little 4.3 inch touch screen, which is IPS. Okay, so that comes with this. Also comes with a USB C to USB A cable, as you can see there, guys. Usual Chinese box, nothing much in it at all. A bit of a uh, bubble foil type of thing to protect it for its journey but other than that that's all it comes with and also this little quick start guide now i think it's the first time i've seen this radio come with any guide of such so it's a bit of a helpful start anyway so we'll go through that a bit more detail later because it's very hard for you to see there you might be able to get a lock on that i'm not too sure but anyway we'll go through that a bit later and next we have the radio as you can see, DSP Digital Radio SDR V6. Right, we'll start off on top. As you can see there, guys, we have a SMA female, which is nice, no rock there at all. So that's the top. This is the side. We have an audio output there, which is a 3.5 mini jack, which I'll be using most of the time, and I'll be using the SP30 from Yesu as an external speaker because it sounds a damn sight better than this. Um, this side we have the encoder, as you can see there guys, which is a, basically an encoder uh, uh, for shifting frequency and various menus and also we can use that to press and switch between the menus as well. I'll show you that in a bit more detail in a minute because it feels a bit funny at first. It takes a bit of getting used to it, but you do soon get used to it. Like We also have a charging indicator light here. Um, if you switch that radio on, it'll light up. If you've got that on charge, that will flick uh, and it'll, it'll remain solid once it's charged. There's also a 5 volt out here for charging things up. I suppose you could charge your mobile phone or small devices from it if you so desire. Obviously, that's an on and off switch, which you've just used a second ago. Here we have a Type-C charging socket. So that's for charging the radio up. It's got a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, I think, as far as I'm aware, but we'll go through that in a bit more detail and check that out. It's, it's built in, into a, apparently a CNC case, which is aluminium. Um, it feels really sturdy. It's well built, that's for sure. Um, so there's no, there's no problem there with the build quality at all. Anyway, let's have a look around this radio. Okay, on to specifications. We have 99 memories. So those are held up here, as you can see there, guys. And you can select that from, well, I'll show you how this works anyway. So you hold this encoder in, as you can see there, guys, and you can just shift between where you've got channel there. So in channel mode now, and you can flip between the lot there. So say, for instance, you want to hold that, save that memory. We'll show you that now when it's done. So hold that in. There you go, channel 4 saved, so 9750 will be saved, okay. It will receive 1 MHz to 149 MHz, and if you wanted to select a frequency, now this is where this gets a bit uh, strange. This is a touchscreen display, IPS, but it's only partial, so we've only got uh, use of using the frequency input. So say for instance we go 14200 megahertz and there we are and that takes us straight to 20 meter band and if you wanted to hold that into a memory you can basically hold that in and there we go it's saved into channel 4 okay so there's that speaker volume we've got speaker volume for the speaker which is this here now i'll go on to that speaker a little bit uh this speaker here on the v6 is bigger than the ones on the previous models i've noticed now I could do with taking this apart and have a little look at the size of the speaker because I can't see. I presume it's the same size, just had more holes drilled, but I could be wrong because it's more of an oval shape on the earlier models. Anyway, we'll get to that maybe another day. I'll maybe just take it to bits and have a little look. So this is your speaker volume here for this speaker, and here is for 
the three and a half mil out for your earpiece, which we'll be using mainly anyway through the Yaesu SP30 because it sounds way better. Okay, and again, that's one, two, thirty-five. So here we have our modes. I'll just get back into that. Oh, there we are. So modes, I can see there we've actually highlighted that by holding that in and by holding that encoder in and just turning that. Okay, so you can see there we've got CW, low side band at 2.6k wide, up side band, AM, and wide FM. Okay, now I will say before we start, this has only got wide FM, so there's no listen to FM UK CB, so that's a bit of a, a bit of a negative thing, but again, it's what it is as a shortwave radio, isn't it? Right, next we have AGC setting. So at the moment I've got it on slow, so you can have slow, mid, fast, and off. I find slow's pretty good, it seems to work fine anyway. We've got reference level, which is basically like a gain, and I find 22, 23 seem to be about right on this. We've got LCD brightness, as you can see there, guys. We're on 32 at the moment. Um, I don't know why that's that low. Take that up. I have it about 70. You can see where it's just getting brighter. But 70 seems to be about nice on that for me. Like, And if you look at, there's no bloom or anything like that on the screen. It's a nice IPS little display on that. It's, it's okay, to be honest. Everything's, you know, it's quite nice. Talking about display as well. Can you see this in the corner here? We've got FPS, which is frames per second, obviously. And it's, um, it's, it's moving around all over the place. If you watch this here, as I move this around, make it a bit busier. It's going down. Obviously, I'm sapping processing power here, aren't I? But uh, yeah, it's it's strange. I wasn't having a frames per second on a display of a receiver. Strange. Anyway, right, IF gain. Again, move that along. I'm finding 22 plus is about right for this. Some things are a bit um, full on, like you might have to drop it a little bit. But other than that, I find it's, it's pretty decent like that on my antenna setup anyway, that's for sure. So the IF gain will go from minus 12 to 67 dB at 1 dB steps, okay. We can also change the colour of the scope. You can see we can have it like a line, blue and green. Right, here we have bandwidth settings, as you can see there, we're at 192 kilohertz here. It'll do 192, 128 and 64 kilohertz. So, well, I'll show you that now. And you see there in this corner, it's just changing. There we go. Leave it on 192. That's it's it's fine at that. Nice and wide anyway, or wider. We also have the waterfall or waveform. That's your waveform, and that's your waveform and more magnification. So it's claiming. So we have waterfall, waveform, times one, times eight, times sixty-four. Strange, isn't it? Anyway, we'll leave the waterfall on. Right, it's saying five items here that are not selectable by the encoder. Battery level, date and time settings. Now, the date and time settings are selectable. So what you do, well, not, not by the decoder. And some are claiming that you can't change the time at all. Well, you can. So if you hold that down round about the time and date area, this will pop up there. As you can see, we've got the 22nd of date. Today we are the 19th, so I'll change that now. There's a 19, 12, okay. We're not 2029, 20, that's for sure. We're running ahead of ourselves, aren't we? So we're 25. The time is still right. There we go, that's the one. So as you can see there, the date's right now, 19th the 12th, 25, 10.47 a.m. Yes, I'm doing this on a morning, guys, just for you, lot. <laughs> If you can see here, we have radio information display, right, which is shown here, ham radio 20 meters, which is good. And most of these are actually preset in the radio itself. And apparently it's got the capability of changing these. I haven't looked into that as yet. Um, I think a few others have had the same problem. But again, we'll um, I'll look into that a bit later. It might be something you have to do off board, but I can't find any way of holding that in. And there's nothing there for that to do at all. Um, so... That's a bit of a no-no, I'm afraid. And here, this is basically a signal meter here. I'll mention that as well. So you've got power. So, <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, you can take that with a pinch of salt, can you, that there, but uh, anyway, it's a signal meter of sorts. So basically, guys, that's about the size of it, really. I mean, there's not that much to really look around it. The, I mean, the biggest thing you want to do of all with this, you want to hear it working, don't you? And I have I've got some clips that I'll let you have a listen to, and to be honest, it's actually, it's very good. It, it works quite well. Okay, let's have a little flick around 20 meter band. See a little bit of action over here. Tango Delta F4G HB. Good morning, sir. That sounds beautiful, that. As I say, the speaker's a little bit rattly every now and again if you get like a big signal. I don't know if it's overload, but I don't think so. It may be a little bit, but even so, it definitely works better with an external speaker. It's a bit quiet on the bands today. Hello, in that time, so I'm copying you very well, and uh, yeah, uh, check uh, check your SWR, maybe there is something, uh, something with maybe uh, maybe with the rain, I don't know if she's raining in your place, uh, Tom, but you sound good, you go far by 5859, DL8 Lima Tango Delta, F4 GSB, back you. Oh, well, there's this audio through the speaker. Well, it's typically disappeared now. <laughs> and uh, some audio equipment. You'll you'll see it on on the QRZ, set. What I'm using now, I'm using something called Apollo system, Apollo Twin X, as an audio uh, processing system. Dynamic microphone at the moment right now. Um, just an SC Dynacaster um, at the moment. Most of the time I'm usually using a condenser microphone, but not now. Sounding good, uh, very good, uh, Fred. I, I thought you might have had some uh, <coughs> some other sound processing, uh, audio processing equipment there, but um, the PR uh, microphone into the, directly into the radio, and you really set it up very good because uh, very well balanced. And you probably have a good voice at, uh, as well. You fight to 10 dB over S9 here, yeah? so uh, also a very beautiful signal. I'm running uh, a few, few watts here. I'm running about 950 watts to a eight element uh, Yagi, German Yagi. Um, by uh, Delta Juliet to Uniform Tango, which is the late and uh, he went silent key when he was going to produce the antenna in America. So uh, most, a lot of the uh, drawings were sold to OptiBeam, so it's a lot of OptiBeam in, in my, uh, my antenna. Seven eight element multi band four element on uh, on twenty by the way so I'm not on eight element bad weather rainy wet windy no snow that and, guy's uh, what I call a QSO. So, uh, I hate this weather. We normally have some conversation as you can hear the audio oh. through the SP30 sounds great like I say the speaker's a little bit rattly on this it's ok but anyway, the, the output to the speaker well, I'm not really looking for the exit just uh, you know uh, uh, CQ CQ but no, not uh, only the X uh, Eric so I wish you the best have a nice day enjoy your your weather apparently better than mine and if i don't work to you before uh, merry christmas to you and yours uh, eric and also happy new year gm3 romeo india charlie f4 g hb all the best seven three eric just having a little listen to the northeast nest based over in harrogate so it's about like 35 40 miles thereabouts Wow. 
Bit of overload there, he's very local in. That speaker's a little bit vibrating, I've noticed on uh, close signals. Um, on FM broadcast that's the internal speaker I'm getting a bit of noise in here at the moment but to be honest I think the IPS display might be interfering with this signal this little spike either side of here I mean I may be wrong but I'm just thinking those seem to be related to that noise anyway that's FM audio wide band FM anyway on broadcast band a little flick around. See, a bit of noise there when there's nothing about, to about, so it's a bit strange that. I mean, when you're picking a station up at a decent station that's got decent strength, it's not so bad. It only seems to be around the FM broadcast. I'm a bit of a, a rookie at where I'm based, to be honest, and this little antenna is only small, but. Um, yeah, I don't get the best um, FM broadcast signals. That's strong enough, mind you. But yeah, it, it sounds good for what it is. I mean, you can't expect miracles from that little speaker, can you? Yeah, you can see those little spikes here, the side of there. In fact, there's only one side now. Get out away from here before I get a strike. Yeah, once the signal gets up there, you're fine. That noise seems to go. It's probably local then, maybe. It's just the, these little spikes either side every now and again. Can you just chatter in? Well, there's a the first look at the deep SDR radio. And yeah, it's not a bad little thing. You've heard on the audio, it sounds really good. It's just the speaker isn't very good at all. It's a bit rattly. You know, if you get like a strong signal or a bit of volume anyway on the actual radio itself, it sounds a bit rattly. But other than that, if you use the output on here, it's great. I mean, it's usable, you know, it's just a bit... Not for me, really. But anyway, what we'll do after Christmas, we'll do a bit of a teardown with this and see what's going on inside and see what this speaker's all about, you know. But on a whole, I think for 50 odd quid, I think it's worth it. I think I've got a discount code from the guys at Banggood, so I'll pop that in the description. Also, a link to this radio as well. Like I say, it's, I think it's a relatively new radio, or so it claims with it being a V6 anyway. Anyway, guys, that's the radio. Uh, we're approaching Christmas, so this is probably the last video before Christmas. But anyway, hopefully you all have a great Christmas and get everything you so desire. And we'll see you in the new year, all being well. <laughs> That's if we survive it. Anyway, guys, thumbs up for the channel wouldn't go amiss. Have a great Christmas and new year, and we'll catch you later. Bye for now.